Is this the best budget bow on the market? So this bow here is a top archery 60 inch hunting bow. It resembles the Black Hunter a lot. It is a little bit lower in the price range than the Black Hunter compared to the Mandarin Duck Black Hunter, the one that is the original from Mandarin Duck. It usually sits around $190, while this one is very similar and, in my opinion, shoots better than the original Mandarin Duck Black Hunter because I've owned one and I ended up selling it because I didn't like it. But Top Archery reached out to me and sent me this bow because I reviewed one of their bows about a year ago. Didn't enjoy it too much. It was a metal riser, it just, it was a little bit too light from what I ordered. They emailed me and said that they had upped their quality and they wanted to send me a bow. And right here it is, and I've had it for a week now. I guess you'll get to see me unboxing it and putting it together right now. Here, I have a package with a top archery bow. This is a budget bow. Uh, I reviewed a bow about a year ago from today. They were gracious enough to send me another one because the last one I reviewed wasn't so great. So they were gracious enough to send me another one and to try out and uh, I'm gonna make a review on it right now. So here's the package that the bow comes in. Let's crack this bad boy open and see what it looks like. Now you got your manual here. Here is your riser. And from what I can see through the bullet wrap there, this thing looks pretty, pretty, pretty sweet, pretty nicely packaged. That thing is absolutely sweet looking. I don't know what kind of wood that is, but it is beautiful. And it's got a radius shelf that I see now. The grip feels good. It's got the radius shelf, which I like. It's got the radius. It's radius on the side to get minimal arrow contact to the riser, which is always a good thing, better for tuning and stuff. All in all, it feels very nice in the hand. Yeah, let's get all this other stuff unboxed. So. Here are your limbs, pretty simple. Probably just bamboo back with fiberglass, black fiberglass, that tends to be what the you know, best performing um, and cheapest way to manufacture. Bows are, this is actually a 45 pound bow, these are 45 pound limbs. Comes with a string, which looks like, looks to be an endless loop. Probably a D97 or B55 or something like that. Um, it actually comes with a stringer as well. Here is your limb bolts. It's actually got felt for uh, limb groove silencers. And then you have string silencers here, which are these big fuzzy ones. I've never actually used these. Um, they look very cool from what I've seen. Um, however, when it comes to a hunting standpoint, if you're gonna be out in weather, um, you want something like Dyneema or a paracord or something synthetic so it doesn't soak up water. However, these look very cool once you put them on. So if you're just shooting in the backyard or something, they work fine. This is probably your side plate and rest material. One thing I didn't mention that I like is this right here has felt on it, which will help the bow be a lot quieter. As you can see, it is a beautiful riser. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get the limbs out and uh, we'll put this bow together. Also, to take a quick look at the manual, the manual is very well instructed um, and it has all your safety warnings on the back but it does look nice on the inside. And it actually shows you the bow limb material, which is maple core, um, which is always good. And uh, the back and front black fiberglass. It's a 60 inch bow, 15 inch riser length, which is great. I like the short risers. You can get it in between 30 and 50 pounds. I got mine at 45. It shows you the parts of the bow, the limb bolts, the limbs, the riser and stuff. It shows you how to install the limbs and the string. So identifying the bottom and top limb is nice. Well, I like the way they do this. The top limb is only cut on one side and the bottom limb is beveled on both sides. And as you can see, this is the bottom limb because it matches the bottom bracket. And one thing about these limb bolts is when you tighten these up, you only wanna go hand tight. You do not want to dog these down. You want to just put it in there and then after you get it down to a certain extent, just take it and tighten it like this. And I'm just pushing it. I'm just barely putting any pressure on it. It's not moving, it's tight enough. 
and go on to the next one. So to string the bow, you want to look at the loops because this is important. One loop is smaller than the other. This is your bigger loop, this is your smaller loop. This hooks on the bottom, the big loop goes around the top. To string the bow, the bow comes with a stringer, but I'm just gonna use my own just because I have it out in handy. What you wanna do is you wanna take your bottom loop, slide it over and set it down into the string group. Take this piece and slide it over the end of your bow with the string going down with the belly with this string. To make sure this string is under that one, make sure you've got a hold of your string and it's going up the belly. Take this piece and set it on top of the bow. Make sure you've got a hold of this string here or you can kind of let it go at this point. You have, this has got a rubber stopper on it. That one's got more of like a plastic piece, but you want to set it. You want to get pretty close to the limb tip so that way it has a good even bend. And then you just step into the stringer kind of give it equal pressure on both limbs. And then as you pull up, the bow will bend and you will set your string down into the groove. And there you have a strung bow. Here we have it. We finally have a strung bow. The brace height on this bow is about eight and a half right now. I'd say that's about right. It'll probably come down some as the string stretches. You'd probably, probably want to sit about a little over eight inches or right at eight inches. That tends to be what recurves like, especially these takedowns with this angle coming out. Um, but yeah, there's a string bow and it does look very nice. I wish I could go out there and shoot it right now, but it is absolutely pouring snow. I've put a knocking set on. I got it set up for about three under. It's about an eighth of an inch or uh, three eighths of an inch above center. What I'm gonna do is even though it's snowing, I'm gonna run outside, I'm gonna take a couple shots, and then I'll run back in here. So this is only about 10 yards, a little over 10 yards. I have my hunting weight arrows, so this will probably make the bow quieter to take that into consideration. I guess I'm gonna go take my, go ahead and take my first shots to it. Um, again, this is only about 10 yards, but you know, it's pouring snow and I don't wanna have the camera out here too long. Feels nice. Definitely got the knock set a little too low or too high. I'll have to adjust that later. But all in all, it was pretty quiet. There's a little bit of hand shock in it. Not much, not much at all. So let's go grab these arrows and try again. Shoots pretty good. Like I'm thoroughly impressed. And it's slinging them quick. I'm hitting right where I'm looking. Oh yeah, I about touched those arrows. One's just off to the left, one's off to the right. So it definitely shoots nice. I really like the feel of it. I've used some budget bows in the past and they've been all right. You know, it looks it's very similar to the Black Hunter. I've owned the Black Hunter and it didn't shoot this well. This is definitely a nice shooting bow. If you were to put a, a better string on this, like a Flemish twist, um, a fast flight Flemish twist, because you know, you got the reinforced limb tips, you could put a fast flight or not even a fast flight, but a good D97 string. It's usually what I use. I'm not too big of a fan of fast flight because it'll make a bow louder. And being a bow hunter, I like it to be quieter. I'd rather it shoot a little slower and be quieter than shoot fast and be loud. It's actually a very nice shooting bow. I'm gonna shoot it for a few days and then I'll get back with you for my final thoughts. I've shot this for about a week now. As you can see, there's no snow on the ground anymore. Um, we have had 
snow pour down on us for the last, for the for longest little bit here. But I can finally come out here and get to record this because I got my new camera. Tell me what you think about that in the comments. I'll take a couple shots as I explain what I found, what I like, and what I dislike about the bow. So my first impressions of the bow were pretty strong. It exceeded expectations for a bow that's only a hundred and or really a hundred dollars. I have been shooting my brand new Bear Mag Riser. It's been something that's been an extremely smooth bow, but it's a very high price point bow, sitting around anywhere from 800 to a thousand dollars so i had high expectations coming into this then i got to this bow what did i think about it it shocked me i didn't have too high expectations because of the bow that i got last time and it's only a hundred dollars you can't expect to get the most smoothest shooting perfect draw fastest bow quietest bow for only a hundred dollars however for a hundred dollars i would prefer this bow over the black hunter and i've had the black hunter and that typically tends to be what everybody leans to that gets into buying a budget bow. You're buying a lot of knockoffs if you want it for under 180 bucks. The original Black Hunter is around $190. However, you can get knockoffs on Amazon that aren't as good for about $80, $90. They have less quality control. I just left, I ended up just leaving this endless loop string on here because that's what it liked. I put a Flemish twist string um, and dropped the brace height down and played with it a little bit and it still shot smoother and more quiet at this brace height. I think this is roughly uh, eight inches. Let's take a couple shots. As you can see, it is a little loud. I didn't shoot too great, but again, I'm not used to this bow. I've only been playing with it a little bit here and there during the snowstorm we've been having. However, you can tell it is a little bit loud, but again, these string silencers aren't the best for actually quieting the bow, but they look cool. And I don't have them perfectly even, which can make a difference. Um, hand shock, not much hand shock, not what you would expect, but any recurve takedown is gonna give you a little bit of hand shock. There's always gonna be a little bit of vibration in the limbs. Overall, if you were to go ahead and put string groove silencers in and also get you uh, like a D97 string for this. Um, it does have reinforced limb tips so you can put a fast flight, but I don't even shoot fast flight on my hunting bows. I only use D97. So if you were to get a Flemish twist, D97 string with some Dyneema puffs or some cat whiskers on this thing, you could really quiet this thing down, especially if you were to put some limb dampeners. I just don't have any limb dampeners. I haven't ordered a string but I eventually might do that because I'd like to do some hunting with it or something. Um, I feel like that would be a cool little video series is hunting and stuff with the, uh, with the budget bow. Let me go get those arrows and I'll take a few more shots. Not a bad group. Um, I am a little bit high. Again, I'm still not used to this bow. I'm used to shooting the mag at this point, and this does shoot a little bit higher. Um, it has a little bit. It has a little bit different of a shelf. But one thing I do like is the is the radius shelf and the uh, the radius shelf and the radius side. I would definitely recommend this bow to anybody looking to get into traditional archery. Um, it's a very decent bow for. I mean, little money. Um, you can get limb dampeners for pretty cheap, and then you can get Velcro and just put in the string grooves and get you a new string. I get my strings from uh, Whispering Bow Strings. They're usually the bow strings that I get are around $30 after you put the Dyne, uh, Dyneema puffs and stuff like that in there, the string silencers. Um, and it'll come with the adjustable tie-on knock sets. But And I also do shoot three under, which is gonna make the bow louder. I'll shoot a couple split finger, um, because it's, it'll quiet down the bow. I'll go shoot a couple like that before I close the video. A lot quieter. As you can tell, that quieted down a lot. But that's my thoughts on this bow, should you get it. 
Yeah, I think you should. If you're looking for a budget bow or looking to get something lighter than what you normally shoot or looking to get something heavier that you can buy limbs for and change them out, I fully recommend it. I think it's a great option for anybody wanting to get into traditional archery. And yeah, I'll put a link in the description to the bow. Um, they didn't pay me to do this. They just sent me the bow and told me to try it out and make a video on it. So right here it is. Top archery, 60 inches. I got mine at 45 pounds. It is a stout 45. When you when you get into cheaper bows, your quality control goes down. So you might order a 45 and it come back as a, you might get a 48 to 50 pound or a 42 to 40. So if you're just beginning into traditional archery, I recommend around a 35 to 40 pound bow. So anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you could really tell a big change in the camera. Uh, I just got this camera because my other one was going downhill quick. So on that note, like and subscribe because it'll help me out tremendously so that I'll be able to pay this off because it's not cheap. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Thank the Lord for the beautiful day for the snow to be gone because it's been like five degrees and now it's 50 and I'm out here in a long sleeve kind of sweating. Other than that, y'all keep filling the spirit.